used four packs of free twist equals 16 inch Cuban twist in the color number four along with one pack of Jana Collections Afro Marley Braid M427 mix. And for the first process, I wanted to use BioSilk's thickening conditioner because I do not like to manipulate or detangle on a dry medium. So I'm applying a generous amount of the conditioner jelly here. And this just helps to create slip as I am maneuvering my fingers throughout the hair. And notice that I kept the elastic band at the halfway point and this helps to contain the hair during this process. For the next step, we'll be clarifying. Now you can use whatever shampoo you like. I'm showing a less expensive option and a more high-end option and I'm just going to use this moisturizing shampoo by Fakai. And I think that this is a great step to employ, especially with packaged hair because you want to make sure that you remove any residual dirt, grime, or residue that may have accumulated during the packaging, manufacturing, or shipment process. And as you can see, I'm immersing the hair in the water, and I just added room temperature water. It should be more of a coolness versus a warmth to the water because we do not want to add any unnecessary heat just yet. And under flowing water, I am going to use a motion where I just take my hand straight down the length of the hair to clear out the shampoo. Now, in my previous Marley Crochet Braid tutorial, I used Talia Widget's Curly Curl Cream. But today, I'm using Fantasia's High Potency Intracellular Hair Polisher Styling Foam because I absolutely love this product and I've been raving about it since. And this is... The cold wave rods that I'm talking about. Just focus on the color versus the brand by the purple brand. Just listen to me, girl. I'm saving you. I'm saving you coins. Now, this is one individual piece of the Cuban twist. And as you can see, it's pretty thick. So I'm just going to separate it into two because this gives you more hair to use per pack. So you get more bang for your buck. Now, I'm just going to drag at the ends to taper them because I do not want the blunt look. And I'm just going to add one to two pumps. You don't have to add too much because the water, because the hair is already damp. So I'm just using this downward motion to saturate the entire length of the hair. And with my cold wave rod, I'm going to attach the hair and do a 360 degree turn to secure it. And then I'm using this winding downward motion to tightly coil the hair around the cold wave rod. And you want to do this until you reach the very end of the hair. And it should be a very continuous, very fluid motion. And I'm going to use the clasp to secure the hair into place. Now I'm placing all of my cold wave rods into the sink. And I want to pull upward on the knob of the faucet. And this just stoppers the sink to prevent any water from draining. And I'm just going to add a little bit of the thickening conditioner by BioSilk just before I add my boiling hot water and I'm completely immersing the cold wave rods in this hot water for about 15 to 60 seconds. And then once that time is up, I am going to push downward on the knob of the faucet and this is just going to drain the water. I love doing this in the sink because it's just in one general area. There's no mess, there's no movement from one container to the next, it's all in one area. Now, I'm going to use this mesh net wig cap, and it's great, it's very durable, sturdy, and it has great structural integrity, so I do recommend looking for a similar mesh cap. And I'm just going to secure it in place. I did not have push pins, so girl, I use the next best thing, which is safety pins. And I just inserted those at the temporal or side regions as well as the frontal portion and the nape, just so that it does not move. Now. I have my cold wave rod and I let my hair dry overnight versus 15 minutes to an hour. I just like that to make sure that I'm not going to create any frizz when I'm separating the hair because it's wet. So wetness will create some type of frizz and I just wanted to avoid that. So here is what my finished curl looks like. It's very springy. With my latch hook needle, I am going to insert it very close to that dark band and I'm going to go through about 
three holes in total. I'm going to attach the hair underneath the hook, push the latch upward, closing the latch hook needle, and I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees and slide it in the reverse direction. And I am going to open up the loop, which is on the bottom position, but after we pull the length of the hair through, the loop will be on the top, which is great because this creates a neater finish and the hair lays flatter. And I'm gonna pull the two strands to secure the knot. Now, that was fast, I'm gonna slow it down. I'm gonna slow it down real slow for y'all. With the latch hook in the open position, meaning the latch is in the downward position, I am going to insert it about two to three holes away from my previous knot and I'm gonna go through four knots in total. You can do this anywhere around the temporal or side regions, not the crown. And I'm going to insert the hair underneath the hook, close the latch, I'm going to rotate the needle 180 degrees and slide it downward so that I do not interfere with any other holes as I'm coming in the reverse direction. And I'm going to open up the loop which is at the bottom and when I pull the length of the hair through that loop should be on the top and I will pull the two individual strands to secure the knot and it should lay flat and neatly. Ooh, I just did that. Yes. Now, you're like, okay, this is two strands. I still don't know how the hair looks. Okay, so I'm where you see this seam starts to come into play. And I'm just going to push the mesh cap inward because I really want to cinch the seam so that it becomes smaller and we're not in a situation where we have to use more of the mesh cap than we need to. So I'm going to push the latch hook needle through and then outward again. And I'm going to gather the mesh cap so that I can reduce the size of the seam, introduce my hair to the hook, close the latch hook needle, reverse it, rotate it 180 degrees and slide it downward. I'm gonna open up the loop and then I'm going to pull the length of the hair through the loop. And I just did this until the seam was smaller in size. And this just helps to make the crown area much more full, which is something you really want to do because you do not want to have your top missing. So just, just make sure you do this, okay? Yeah, all right. So, um, so my mannequin, you know, she's, she's doing real good. You know, her name is Shaniqua. She's cooperating today. And... As you can see at the crown, I like to space the knots closer together. So you may want to go through two to three holes versus four to five holes. And once I'm in the front, I cut the hair in half so that I can create somewhat of a side bang. But I did incorporate longer pieces at the front because I just like to make a more natural looking tapered bang, not that blunt bang across the forehead. That's not what I'm going for here. And when I'm done and look a little something like this,